two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten cameras. That's enough. I can see this being a battle between three of these cameras. I don't think it's catching any of that. Well, it hates that, doesn't it? Uh, I don't think it's doing it at all. I'm going to give up. My autofocus test really started all the way back in March of this year. It's now December and it happened when I first got my hands on the Canon 1DX Mark II and the Sony a6300. This was in Sweden, in Gothenburg and then in Stockholm. Uh, I took the cameras out on the streets to get some shots and test out what it was like to track people who were walking and cyclists and that sort of stuff. Because I was working, I only had limited time with the two cameras, I really wanted to really compare them as much as possible when it comes to autofocus. So uh, in my hotel room at night in Stockholm, I did a few tests to uh, see what they were like against each other. Now if that sounds a little bit smutty and wrong, that's because you've got a dirty mind and you should just go and clean it out. What I was actually doing was tying up some swinging bags on a four poster bed. Now, if that sounds wrong to you still, you're beyond help, I'm afraid. Well, this is the 40 millimeter STM 2.8 on the 1DX Mark II, my extreme pendulum lens pouch from a four poster bed test. I know you've all been waiting for this one, and here it is. Back in England, over the next few months, I carried on messing around with autofocus, most of it on a one-armed gimbal, and filming my friends and family, because my friends and family love being filmed by me and having their photograph taken by me. They just encourage it all the time. They love it, completely love it. What does it do? It means I can film you. <laughs> Are you filming? No. Yeah, you are. No. Are you doing one of those things like you did last time we came ages ago with the pocket home video? No. No, that was boring. Does that contraption just make it so like 
So the camera stays still, but you can move it. Yeah. How do you know that? I guessed. Good genius. Is this a good one? Huh? Is this a good one? What do you mean? Why are you going all the way up there? So I can do this. Can I be the camera holder? <laughs> camera holder? Is that what it's called? Camera. No, you need to have years of training and like... Can I film you? No. Can I just take over and no. film you? No. Why? No. No, because I've got to go and get ready. Are you filming the audio or just the... No, audio, no, none at all. Sony A7S II or A7R II? I get asked this question so much. They're two cameras which have many similarities but many key differences. The A7R II is the superior stills camera. It has a beautiful 42 megapixel sensor. The A7S II is the superior camera for shooting video. It only has a 12 megapixel sensor, but that is optimized for shooting video and for shooting in extraordinarily high ISOs, which the A7R II cannot do. The A7S II has better slow motion. It does 1080p up to 120p, but it is cropped. Whereas the A7R II does that same frame rate, also cropped, but in 720p, and it looks nowhere near as good. The A7R II has a super 35mm mode for shooting video, whereas the A7S II does not. Although with clear image zoom, you can simply zoom into 1.5 times on it, and it's effectively the same thing. The A7R II has phase detection tracking in autofocus. The A7S II only has contrast-based autofocus, and it's slow. That's the dilemma. I love both of the cameras, and it is difficult to choose. I'm lucky enough to have both of them. If I am shooting video, then my choice will always be the A7S II. It produces a better image. There's no image artifacts. It has that super slow motion mode. And most importantly, it has this exceptional performance in low light. Both have the five axis stabilized sensor, which is, well, once you've had it, it's really hard to use a camera that doesn't have it. In an ideal world, we'd have the features of these cameras combined. We'd have the high ISO performance with a high megapixel sensor with phase detection autofocus tracking and would have the super slow motion mode of the A7S II. All the Sony stills cameras shoot the same codec in 4K XABCS, which is 100 megabits a second. If you're going by the numbers, it's not really enough, but it actually is completely adequate for what it is. It's tough to choose between them both. I love them both, but you know, they're gonna be replaced at some point. I started doing the more formal tests in the summer, and the reason I started doing them was to keep myself creatively busy. In late May, I had injured myself or my back pretty badly on a shoot and I had three ruptured discs. It meant I just couldn't do any paid work and I needed to keep busy because if I don't keep busy, then I'm just gonna get all miserable and that's not gonna help my healing in the slightest. So I ended up with a huge amount of very dull footage, all these different comparisons and trying to edit it into something useful and also very entertaining which is key for me there's no point making a video which is boring to watch it needs to be entertaining that was hard work the first test was a complete disaster the scale electrics test as you saw in part one that's why on the second test i used the wind up toys again quite small though but nice and sedate the thing is it's not really that real world is it? i mean how often do you film wind up toys moving on the kitchen table one so on the uh, Sigma Art 50mm on the 1DX Mark II. 
So it's got to try and stay on Chewbacca and not be distracted by the lady crossing in front of him. That's the plan. Would it work? Nah. So, now, continue to track subjects ignoring possible obstacles. Well, I did. Hmm. I'm going to try it manually. And if I want to pull on to her, there I am. The I could do with peeking this camera. No, I just gone off her, apparently. Let's go back onto Chewie, not that I can see Chewie. Where are you going, dude? Oh, this is just disaster. <laughs> That's how I feel right now. If I lock onto the fallen granny there and tilt up, it tries to track her, but of course you can then go out of frame and then it will just default onto the background. So let's try that again. Using the focus lock button. When I found her, there it is. Track, track. I'm going to, I'm going to lose it, so I hold it and it keeps it out of focus. And of course I come back and she's still in focus. That's what you need, focus lock button. It was what was really useful on the C100 when it was just uh, the center frame when I used it in Miami. So there we go. Sony A6300 and the um, 90 mm macro Sony lens. Found focus, main focus control toggle, that looks like it. Yeah. So, focus is on something in the foreground and then all done, it should. No. Oh, it's like it literally one press and it's press once and it's manual focus. Press again. And there's also. Oh, that's quite useful. Are we ready? Off you go. Good luck. Facial tracking. Come on. Gone. In fact, let's have it at normal and sensitivity to high. Don't fall over. Let's try the AX53, which is my blogging camera, and I think it's very good actually. It's, but it's, I don't expect it to be any good at this. It's only contrast based auto focus. Absolutely not a hope. Why not? Okay, really close. There we go. And this is the uh, Panasonic GX8. And uh, I haven't used this much, but the cool thing about this, apart from it being cheap, um, it has a five axis stabilized sensor inside, which is very good. Um, autofocus though. I don't really have much um, fast lenses, which um, I've got autofocus, they're all manual, like Voigtland and stuff. I've got a few. This is a nice zoom though, this is 12 to 35. I'll give this a try. It's a good camera though, it's a really good uh, bargain camera. The, my biggest issue with it, I would say, is it doesn't have um, a mic input, which sucks. I should always have a mic input. It's definitely autofocus mode, but it's not. <laughs> if I just leave it static, will it pick it up? Right, it's focused on her now, but see, that's okay if, if, she, if it's on her. That should be able to focus on that, it's not too close. Come on. Very slow, it's got there eventually, which is very slow. This is the uh, A7R II with the Metabones, with the latest firmware, which is supposed to be better for autofocus. And this is the Sigma adapter. So I'll try some Sigma glass on here and some can glass and see how the autofocus is doing. 
All right, so this is the Metabones version 4, uh, EF to E, with the uh, Sigma Art. Uh, uh, it's not doing it, is it? Not too close either. I know not too close. 50mm Sigma. 50mm Sigma with the Sigma adapter. Let's see if can crack it. So try to use a Canon 135mm f2. It's found it by holding down the shutter button. Go off. There's no tracking going on whatsoever. No, nothing. All right, let's try the Metabones. Actually, before we do, let's just try one more Canon lens. Uh, 7200, f2.8. Okay, see if it will do anything about that. No. We found it by pressing the shutter button, but that's not what continuous autofocus is. It just doesn't know. It doesn't know this adapter. It's not supposed to work with anything other than Sigmas anyway. So let's try the Metabones. Now with the Metabones version 4 on. I mean, it's doing something, but not what I want it to do. I mean, just go to the background, really. Go and try. It's really slow. Well, no. That's not working very well. And now for something completely random. The Samsung NX1. Well, I still got it. I haven't really used it that much, but it is a really nice camera that's been discontinued by Samsung. They're not going to make cameras like this anymore. Well, who knows in the far future. But it does have UHD internal 4K recording. It's a nice image. And it is H.265 as well. And it has touchscreen tracking autofocus. It may not be the best, touchscreen tracking autofocus camera that I've got and tried out in this test. That's the Canon 1DX Mark II. But at least it has it. It's a shame they stopped making it. This camera will meet a nasty end if it doesn't track Darth Vader. Percy is in Dude, what's it? Oh, the treats have fallen in there. Whoops. That'll be why. You're not interested in cameras. All the treats have fallen in there. <laughs> Should have realised. To do every single camera with every single lens permutation would take forever. And it was clear seeing how well the top cameras performed, the 1DX Mark II, the A7R II, and the A6300 with native lenses, and how they didn't perform so well with adapted lenses. There was no point in carrying on this test. This was supposed to be a very challenging test, not as challenging as Scalatrix, but still very challenging. Nobody can deny it. You got a good thing going on You got me spinning like a yo-yo As you play me all night long So you gonna give me what I want Or am I gonna have to bet I can't live without You I can't live 